Unfortunately, the slides are for some reason damaged. I have no idea. A good part of uh, the slides are missing, and uh, so I'll have to rely on my memory, I hope. Uh, to, and anyhow, as I mentioned, the uh, best way to do algorithms is uh, to do them on the board, uh, right, with your help. So here is an interesting problem. So assume that you have one sequence of letters, say A, B, A, B, C, A, uh, A, F, for example. Um, and you have another sequence, uh, say C, A, D, uh, F, and then whatever, say L at the end. And your task is to determine if it's possible to erase uh, some of the letters on the top sequence uh, so that you get the bottom sequence. How would you solve this problem? So again, you have one sequence of letters, another sequence of letters. You are not allowed to permute the letters, but only to delete some of the letters. For example, you might delete these four letters and start mapping from here. So deleting a few letters so that the remainder coincides with this sequence. Uh, any ideas? They have to be in order, yeah. You are not allowed to uh, change the order of letters either here and here. All what you can do is delete uh, the letters from top. Yes? Can you um, somehow like, order the second one? No, you cannot do any permutation. The, this, you cannot touch this sequence. And all what you can do is delete some of the letters from the sequence. How many times have you liked this top one? My goodness, have you had breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> How many times can you either erase the top one? Well, ideally, fewer the better. But let's say we will for, at, at the moment accept a quadratic solution. So, uh, so, so you would go through this sequence, and what you, would you do with the... Okay, so the idea is uh, uh, you go through the top sequence until the first occurrence of the first yes. letter here. What do you do next? Okay. You move to the next position, and then you continue this way until you find A, uh, and so forth, right? How many steps does your solution take? Is it quadratic? It's linear, right? Because you go only once through this sequence, and only once through that sequence. So it would be linear. So why is uh, this, if there exists a solution at all, uh, why would it be, why would this algorithm definitely find it? Uh, yeah? Right, so I would say that uh, clearly if there is any solution, if you move this pointer to the left, uh, it cannot uh, hurt, right? But I would say this is an example where the definition of the algorithm obviously kind of guarantees that uh, the solution is correct, right? Uh, for these kind of problems, 
it would be kind of pedantic to produce uh, some kind of more sophisticated, uh, uh, more sophisticated uh, solution, uh, some proof. Okay, so let's look at another problem. Any questions? So you have a long road somewhere in rural Australia. Okay, and then you have a bunch kind of sparse collection of houses. Right? And now Telstra wants to allow mobile phone use for inhabitants in these houses. So how mobile phones work, your mobile phone communicates with the nearest tower, and then the tower is connected with some high throughput link uh, with, the, right, with the switchboard, uh, and the range of the tower is, say, five kilometers. And now you have to decide where to put the towers so that you minimize the total number of towers needed. How would you solve this problem by a greedy method? Yes? Uh -huh. So you would place uh, your tower five kilometers away from the first. Well, how about a better uh, solution? How about maybe I look where the houses are densest and then put the tower smack in the middle? Would this work? No. So actually your solution is perfectly correct. You will put the tower five kilometers away from the first house. Then you would look all with what are all the houses that are five kilometers to the right. They will be covered. Find the first uncovered uh, house and put, where do you put the, the next tower? Five kilometers away this way. And then again, remove all the, uh, then see which tower, which uh, houses are covered. Find the first uncovered house and proceed in this way, right? Now, again, what do you think? Now, strictly speaking, you should be proving that this is an optimal solution. But what do you think? Do you yourselves need to see a proof to, have, to believe that this is the optimal solution? No, right? Why is it? Uh, well, you can say as follows. Uh, assume that there is a solution. Uh, yes? Ah, would it be better to do it from both ends at the same time? Let's think about this. But let's first prove that this is an optimal solution. So um, assume that there is something better. If there is something better, then the greedy solution is violated somewhere. Say it is violated, if it's violated at the very first step, how would you morph this solution into a greedy solution? What can you do? So here is a solution that I claim is better, and you have to persuade me that it's actually not, that is at best as good as the greedy solution. How would you morph this solution into the greedy solution? So what do you do with this tower? What do you swap? Okay, rather than removing the towers, what is the shift, right? You can simply move the first tower 
uh, to the very uh, edge, actually this, the first house wouldn't be covered, it should be here, you can just shift it to the right and clearly no house will go out of coverage to the right because this will only make it closer and uh, on the other hand no house on the left will go out of coverage because the distance will be within the five miles. And you can now repeat this with all towers, right? And see that this is indeed the optimal solution. Now let's talk about this idea, maybe to do it simultaneously from both ends. So here is what happens. Assume that Telstra has two engineers, right? One votes for labor. <laughs> what does this mean? It means that he starts to do this from the left side. <laughs> One, God forbid, votes for liberals. <laughs> and he starts from the right hand side. And then the liberal guy says, you are dumb, I am going to produce, my solution produces fewer towers than your solution. Can he be right? How would you prove that doing it from the left would produce exactly the same number of towers doing it from the right? Yes? There is something, so it's kind of, if you flip them, hmm, it's kind of not immediately totally obvious. There is a very much simpler explanation why uh, the number of towers must be the same. What do you think? Exactly. So the reason is we proved that greedy produces optimal solution. What does it mean that greedy produces optimal solution? That there is no other solution, no matter how obtained, that achieves fewer towers. Greedy solution will find absolutely the smallest number of towers that cover all the houses. Now, doing it from the left, it will produce optimal solution. Doing it from the right, it will also produce optimal solution in terms of the number of, of tower, towers. But then these two uh, numbers have to be equal because they are both equal to the minimal number of towers uh, needed. So you see, so the greedy itself uh, um, allows you to make uh, uh, kind of deductions about uh, uh, optimal solution. Okay, let me try to remember what was the next problem. Okay, assume that you have a bulletin board and you look at it from the top, right? And here is, you have to put a bunch of posters, okay? And you are very stingy, just like my wife, okay? So you want to, you don't believe me, but trust me. Um, yeah, so um, what was I saying? So <laughs> that was punishment for bad, bad uh, uh, conscientiousness, right? Okay, so you want to use absolutely smallest number of pins to affix these posters to the board, right? So you want to use the smallest number of pins but to achieve that every poster has been stabbed at least once. How would you do it? You want to, yes. Okay. So how do you find the optimal solution in the first place? Well, opti greedy 
Uh, so you are saying, so the question is, uh, when we proved optimality, we said, uh, assume that there exists a more optimal solution and we show that it uh, has to be greedy. Well, you don't have to know how this solution is being made. You just assume there is one that is better and show that this leads to inconsistency, namely that this solution should have uh, be as good as the greedy solution, right? So this means that for all other solutions, uh, none of them can be better than greedy because any so optimal solution, quote unquote, purported opt. And notice there can be many optimal solutions. Greedy might find just one, but it always finds at least one optimal solution. Now, if you want, back to this problem, if you want to use as few pins as possible, what would be logical to try to do? Where do you place the first pin? Okay, so let me kind of try to summarize. You guys are blood too smarty, too smart. You kind of, uh, I want you to give some wrong solutions first so that I can teach you, so that I can teach you what the right solution is, right? <clears throat> now, a good thing that looks good is if I want to minimize the number of pins, I should place the pin at the place that it, uh, uh, pinch uh, that it uh, stabs the largest possible number of posters uh, because it will be an optimal use. What do you think? Is this a good strategy? So trying to maximally use each pin, just place it wherever it pinches the largest number of uh, um, uh, posters because then when you remove, when you ignore these posters, you will have the fewest possible number to, uh, to uh, pinch with, I mean to pierce with a needle. Well, actually this doesn't work, but it is not trivial why it doesn't work. Assume that your posters look like this. You have three posters here. Uh, can I, yep. Here it is, you have three posters like this, and then you have another <coughs> three posters like this, and then you have two posters here, and you have two posters here. If I try to maximally use the first pin, where should I place it? In the middle, right? So now all of these posters are taken care of, except these two at the end and these two at the other end, right? So I would have to place a needle, say here and here, and uh, I use altogether three needles. But how many needles do I actually need? Just two needles because I stab it here and I stab it here, and uh, lo and behold, this uh, uh, will be using one pin less, and still all the posters will be stabbed. So how then do you obtain for an arbitrary combination of posters, how do you find where to put the needles? Uh, any suggestion? Sorry, say it a little bit louder. Place the pin at the neck, but at the end of the next unpinned poster. And the end of the next unpinned poster. But how do you choose the one to start? Where do where? So pin one goes where? How do I find the place for pin one? Right side of the leftmost unpinned poster. Left unpin poster. So say if I have these two posters, this and this, which one is uh, uh, 
uh, say like this. Which one is leftmost poster between these two? Exactly. So you always choose the poster that finishes first. This is essentially your kind of interval selection uh, logic. So you will take the first finishing place, uh, right? The poster that finishes the earliest. Since uh, this poster has to be stabbed, uh, where is the best place to stab it? On the most right, so you stab it at the very end. Then, right, because this poster needed to be stabbed, but stabbing it at the very end maximizes the number of posters that you stab in this way. You ignore all stabbed posters, and again, you pick a poster that ends first, and you stab it uh, there. How would a cut and paste argument for this, uh, uh, for this solution work to prove its optimality? Assume that the first pin is not placed at the very end, right? It's placed somewhere before that, right? Now, what can you do with that pin? You can move it to the right, because this is the first ending poster. All the posters that were stabbed will remain stabbed. But you might stab more other posters. And again, by cut and paste algorithm, you can move the pins to the right until you massage this solution into your greedy solution. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so notice, as I said, it's not always, you have to practice a little bit uh, before you can um, figure out how to prove uh, optimality of a solution. Okay, let's look at another example. Oh, God. My goodness, now I have sympathy for dogs on a leash. <laughs> My wife would love to see me better <laughs> like this. Yeah. My wife is Korean, and she claims that she's from Seoul. But I, sometimes I'm pretty sure she comes from the north. <laughs> Okay, what are the coins that Australia has? It's a $2 coin, $1 coin, 50 cent, 20 cent, uh, 10 cent, 5 cent. Do they still have one cent penny? No, it's gone. Okay. Now, you have to assume no nodes are to be used, and you have certain amount S that you have to give, say, as change. How do you give change for certain amount while making sure that the total number of coins that you give is as small as possible? How would you give an amount S so that the total number, yes? Uh, start with the biggest coin that you possibly can. And just okay, how many of the biggest would you give? As many as you can. As many as you can. So this would be a greedy solution, right? You would start with the largest denomination and give as many as you can, then you see how many you can give on the next smaller denomination, and so forth. Why would this uh, produce an optimal solution? Well, in fact, uh, 
Youngs have different uh, coins. They don't have 50 cents. They have a quarter and 10 and 5. In fact, the states, uh, despite the fact that politicians are not the smartest people around, uh, they choose the denomination precisely so that the greedy works. Remarkably, right? So let us show that uh, the Australian denomination are chosen correctly in the sense uh, that greedy method will produce the fewest possible number of coins, the smallest number of coins. Okay. Well, assume that for some amount S, there is a solution which is not greedy and it produces fewer coins than the greedy solution. Well, if the solution is gr not greedy, then either you didn't give the maximal amount, didn't use maximal amount of $2 coins, or you didn't do maximal amount of $1 coins, and so forth, right? So assume that the greedy is already violated uh, when it comes to giving $2 coins, right? Because all other solutions are actually subcases uh, of the case with $2. You can easily verify at home. So what does it mean that the greedy is violated? It means that out of this amount S, after you took certain number of two dollars, you have an amount, uh, say, A1, that is strictly bigger than two dollars. But you did not use a two dollar coin to give that amount, right? Because that would mean you could have given one dollar coin more, but you chose not to. So the amount A1 is strictly bigger than two dollars, and no, and, uh, no more two dollar coins were used. Now the question is, how many one dollar coins such optimal solution can use? Can it use two? No. If you use two one dollar coins, that cannot be an optimal solution. Why? Because you can replace these two one dollar coins with a two dollar coin. Right? So you can use at most one one dollar coin. Well, this means after you take this one dollar, you get an amount A2, which is equal to uh, A1 minus one. Or maybe you didn't use any of one dollar coins, but uh, uh, you, you can use at most one. So you will have an amount A2, which is bigger than one dollar, right? Because you gave at most one one dollar coin. So this can reduce A1 for at most one, so A2 amount will be bigger than one dollar, but you cannot use more one dollar coins. How many 50 cent coins uh, can you use? Again, at most one. So A3 will be bigger than 50 cents, right? And you cannot use uh, more than, and you can no longer use 50 cent coins. Okay, now let's see, we have 20 cents. How many 20 cent coins at most could you use? At most two, because if you use three, that's 60 cents, and you can replace it with just two coins, 50 and 10. So if it's optimal solution, we can use either two, either one, or zero 20 cent coins. Okay, let's see now. If I use two 20 cent coins, then I will be left with amount A4, 
which is bigger than 10 cents, but can I use now 10 cent coin? No, because I am using two 20 cent coins. If I use 10 cent coin, that will be altogether 50 cents. I can replace this three with just one 50 cent coin, so I cannot use 10 cent coins. I can use only five cent coins, but the amount is bigger than 10, so I would have to use at least two of them, more than two of them, but then that's not possible because I could use one 10 cent coins. So this does not work, right? How about zero? If I don't use any 20 cent coins, then I have 50 cents to be given <coughs> with 10 and 5 cent coins. Each of them can be used only one because any two of them can be replaced with the double denomination. So clearly, uh, in this case, uh, 50 cents cannot be given. So uh, what happens if I use one 20 cent coin? Well, then I will end up with A4, which is bigger than, uh, what is that, uh, 30 cents. But 30 cents, I can use at most one 10 cent coin, right? Which will leave me with 20 cents and I can use only five cents. So this will not work either. And voila, if the amount, if the change given violates the greedy, it cannot be optimal, right? So it takes a little bit of argument and considering the cases, this is not cut and paste. Well, it's kind of almost, but uh, cut and paste with some additional uh, reasoning. So uh, another case when greedy works, if your denominations are say C, so one, C, C squared, C cube, up to say C to some power K. If these are your denominations, then greedy still works. Uh, and try to, as a homework, to do it to show that in fact uh, similar, well, let's see, why would uh, uh, greedy work? Well, assume that the solution is not greedy. This would mean, for example, to start with violation at the highest denomination, that the amount A is bigger than uh, C to the, bigger or equal than C to the K, but the leftover amount, right? But you don't use any more CK coins, right? So the amount is bigger or equal than CK, but you don't use CK. Right, so this means that you can use only at most CK minus one um, such coins, or a domination CK, C to the power K minus one coins. How many coins of this denomination at most can you use? C minus one, because if you use C many of these, you can replace them with a single C to the K. So since uh, uh, you can use uh, at most C minus one, you will end up with, uh, with the amount that is bigger than C to the K minus one, and you don't use a uh, uh, coin um, C to the, uh, C to the uh, K minus one, right? And now you proceed in the very same way and eventually, of course, you will get an amount bigger or equal than C without using C, which means that you would have to use C many of these, at least C many of these, and that violates the uh, greedy assumption. Okay, let me try to remember another example that got deleted. Ah, okay. Assume that you have a whole bunch of sorted arrays. So here is one, here is another one, here is another one, another one, 
another one, and so forth, right? And you use merge sort to put them together in a single sorted array. In each merging operation, you can take any of the uh, arrays and merge them. Now, each time you merge, you move all the elements for the two merged arrays into another array of length equal to the sum of these two lengths, and every element is moved once. Okay. Now, your task is to determine in which order should you merge these arrays so that the total number of movements of elements is as small, as few as possible. How would you merge these arrays? <laughs> ah, always merge two smallest ones. Let's see why this is a good recipe. So, say you merge these two arrays and produce this one, right? Then you say merge this array with another array, so this is say array one, two, this is array three. You merge these two, and then maybe you merge arrays four and five into this one, right? And finally, you merge these two. Which elements got moved the most? Hmm? How many times the elements moved? Each time you move to the next level, you need one move. From here, you need another move, and here, another move. So you should start merging arrays the smallest, the shortest arrays first, because then the, if you look, each element is moved depth, uh, its depth of its array, right, uh, many times. And so since you want to minimize this number, the deepest on your tree should be the shortest arrays, right? So you merge the shortest one, then from shortest, and so forth. This is actually the same trick as the one used in Huffman encoding of sequences. Uh, but five minutes is not enough for Huffman, so I think you got a good uh, dosage of algorithms for the day. Tomorrow there will be Dolby lecture and uh, you will be able to apply, they will explain how to apply for internship uh, uh, at Dolby to do really cool. So feel free to bring your buddies uh, uh, if they are interested in audio and image signal processing. Uh,